Dan Bonjour, Printers Technicals here, checking in on our little 3D print operation for today. If you're unfamiliar or new to the channel, I do 3D printing here at home, stuff to fix stuff around the house, exhibition prints, stuff to sell on the internet. If you're interested in any of those things and want to follow my progress, I do these vlog style videos, mostly my bread and butter type video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. So what have I got going on today? Well, if you haven't seen the previous vlog, go ahead and I'll put a card up here. You can kind of catch up a little bit. Following up on some of the projects we've been working on, a couple new things here going on the bamboo is a little somewhat excited. I'm, uh, I'm medium excited about that. We've got our big S down here. I've been waiting. It's been sitting there for a day to pull it off the plate because I wanted to do it on camera. And uh, a few other things. So let's start, let's start with the Giga. No, 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 no. All right, so Orange Storm Giga, if you saw the previous couple of uh, things, I'm making a big letter S for my driveway gates. Yes, I have gates for my driveway to keep out other people. Uh, so I wanted to print a big one, and this is the first print after fixing the Giga. Now, I did kill the print because of the lifting. If you saw the last vlog, it was lifting pretty, you can see, you can see right there, it looks like a damn boomerang. Uh, so I need to put some glue or something like that on the bed for better adhesion because this area up front where I'm doing most of my, well, I've done most of my prints, um, it's, I you know, I guess I'm touching it or, you know, other prints going on there or whatever. It's causing some lifting consistently, so I need to put some glue down. I only burned about a kilo and a half of filament on it. I say only a kilo and a half, but it is a big print. And uh, this first attempt was kind of like, is it going to work? I kind of already wrote off the losses on this because I wasn't sure it was going to work, but the gig has been performing beautifully since we changed out the print head and did a remeshing. So just some adhesion issues on the build plate. Otherwise, the parts, you know, let's look at the, you know, so this is what was against the build plate. This, you know, it's a point, little, 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 point four, um, point, point four layer height uh, on a point six nozzle. So Layer lines look okay. There's a little, I should stop touching this thing the camera's on. One of these layers looks a little sus and that might be from, I didn't swap filament or anything like that. I mean, it's well adhered, it's solid. The infill looks great. Taking a look at some of these bigger pieces. You know, this is one layer down on top of the infill because you can see the infill through it. Looks pretty good to me. I mean, the, a new, the layer that was against the plate kind of somewhat beautiful, um, at least compared to all the other Giga prints. But the lifting is just the only issue. And I thought about this, like I think it might be time for me to get that 800 by 800 Tronxy PEI sheet because when you do big prints, you can clearly see, where is it? The line right here between the build plates, you know, if you kind of angle it and Obviously, I'm going to coat this in resin, and usually the whatever's face down is not what's being shown, but in some instances it is, so I don't want that. I want to try to get rid of that. It's a $200 sheet, a PEI sheet from Tronxy, uh, but I'm thinking it might be worth it on some of these larger prints. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll kick the can on it a little more, but overall, looking pretty good. Let's take a look at the next big one here. Again, very consistent across the build plates. That remeshing, you know, kind of did the trick just getting the Z height all in place. A little more lifting there. So maybe uh, some uh, glue on the build plate and maybe just more brim, because this is like five millimeters of brim. It's not a lot. Um, you know, uh, with this much filament, it probably makes sense to go ahead and do a bunch. So um, I'm gonna make those adjustments and then reprint this, because again, this is only two kilos all in, and it's a, it is a quite large letter S. Let's see how they have it here. So this is the main part. It's big, it's you know like three feet tall by maybe about two feet wide. So it'll be nice and striking and impressive, hopefully. Sold a few more of our hornet nests. These are in stock. These were sitting here last time, but I did sell a few more that I pulled from my stock. Not any orders in the past couple days though, so I don't know, people, the economy's in ruins, man. No one's buying hornet nests. So what have I got going on the bamboos? Well, that's somewhat interesting. You're not, you're not gonna surprise me, I can see. I can see your fat ass sitting right there. All right, so if you've been following the channel for, I don't know, the past month, you probably remember Ultimate Pen Cup, which is a custom design that I sell the design for and sell the print for. You probably remember the under the desk fan, uh, probably get at least one comment, extra comment a day about it's, it's just pumping your, your flatulence up through the fan. You guys, 
see a doctor. Someone's telling me if I if you don't pass flatulence, then they were giving me uh, the correct macros to eat, so I would. Oh, I love the internet. So I'm sitting here with the Ultimate Pen Cup and my under the desk fan and those USB whips where I plug in cameras or whatever. I was thinking like, gosh, that's a lot of clutter. <laughs> What if I can combine these into one mega thing? It's the ultimate desk, I call it the desk hub. Um, I've already got an idea for the logo if you catch my drift. So I've spent no less than four hours this morning designing it here, I'll put it right here. Uh, so many different incarnations, um, it, it needs to be wide. And so originally I was trying to print something that was about 340 millimeters wide to fit on the Soval. The Soval is not giving me great prints, and I kind of want to like work on this project versus fix the Soval. I rarely use the Soval. And so I was like, well, I could step up to the Cobras, but this is going to be a lot of filament for this thing, and I need it to, I want it with a nice surface finish. So I really want it to be done on a bamboo. So what I've done is I split it into two 240-ish millimeter halves and been working on combining them. So what I did was I took a, I made them into two halves, and then I made them into negatives, and I made them nest. And then this is just a sample print to make sure I had everything lined up. So these are gonna be two big modules side by side and they fit together like so. And then I can put a, a heat insert in this side. And then when it mates with the other side, I can just send a screw in, a little M3 screw. And that will make it somewhat seam, you know, more seamless than this because uh, this was done kind of quick and dirty, but it will mate them together. This desk hub will contain my fan, well, a new fan rather, an ultimate pen cup or a pen cup of some variety, USB storage, and additionally, something that I think is pretty cool because I have these USB-A and USB-C 3.13, whatever, coming up, and that's, you know, I plug my phone in, the camera in, any, you know, USB drives. This is a, just a little flush mount adapter, um, you know, thing. It's just a pass-through, so that I can mount this into the 3D print, the ultimate desk hub, and then, plug in the cable into the back. Now this cable will be concealed inside the desk hub, and then the desk hub has a port a portal, we'll call it a portal, a bong hole <laughs> that passes underneath the desk, so the wire is gone, and it's just this little port on the desk hub, fan next to it. Additionally, additionally I'm gonna be using this 120 millimeter AC, uh, uh, AC Infinity fan, because uh, this one puts out a nice consistent amount of air and it's a lot quieter. That under the desk fan that I did with that little inline uh, unit makes a lot of noise. This is pretty quiet and it has a speed controller, which I cut out, you see here, I made a cutout for it. So this will nest nicely into it and then I can sit there and adjust it as needed. Also, the part I'm probably least excited about is I finally entered the year 2025. I'm a pop socket guy. I don't use MagSafe for anything. I don't trust it. I think it's it, it's given me 6G, you know, brain wave, can M, <laughs> MK Ultra waves into my brain or something like that. But I'm like, all right, well, I gotta enter the, leave the, st so the stone age. So I, I put that in the ultimate desk hub, a spot for a MagSafe that way it can hold my phone because you know it's pretty strong, it holds my phone up. So I've got a new pop socket coming that is like a pass through for MagSafe so I can have it on the back. So that's gonna be in the Ultimate Desk Hub as well along with all the other trimmings. Um, I won't need a phone stand to hold the phone up because I have the MagSafe and it will be all contained in one tight little unit. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. I don't know if I can sell this product because um, there's no way around kind of heavy supports. So the Mark I that I designed, uh, which has changed quite a lot when I was trying to do it in one print, this came off the Soval, and man, the Soval, it needs some love because even just the first layer, whoo, sheesh. So this is too tall, um, it's, and it's odd too because like the, the layer separation here is insane, but then like the supports are basically part of the model. It's like, and it's stringy as hell, and I even dialed the temperature down. So the Soval needs like some comprehensive love or a trip to uh, a farm upstate or something like that because you now I got the Soval because I was printing a lot of those crypto shrouds and I wanted something fast uh, and it was on it was on sale when I bought it it was like you know four hundred something dollars and so I was like yeah I'll get it and you know I put it together and it worked great uh, but it just needs some love and you know maybe the Soval is a good guinea pig machine uh, you know kind of run a learning machine because it's kind of open sourcey a lot of people mod the Soval so maybe that's good to learn on. I'll never be able to resell it for anything that's worthwhile because I'm not going to list that thing on eBay or Facebook Marketplace or whatever. You can't ship these things. You can take them apart, but like, would you really trust a 3D printer that some dumbass like me took apart and shipped? Probably not. And I don't want to deal with people 
emailing me after the fact. So it's not worth it. I'm going to hang on to it and maybe do some experiments with it. But this is the first incarnation. I removed the round cup, but the fan will sit here, the MagSafe here, and the, uh, the charging ports. But, you know, this kind of is like a basic idea. It's going to be longer. It's going to be like this wide because it's in two parts. But that's kind of like the first opening volley or opening concept for it. And also, we just wrapped up the, uh, the voice part or the main shooting part, talking head part for... You, I, no, I don't want you seeing down there. I don't wear shorts. I'll only wear khakis ever from the top. And we also just finished up wrapping up our talking head portion of the Pantograph video. So a lot of people were interested in this device. Christian, again, thank you so much. I went ahead and I'll put some B-roll here. Be sure to watch the video when it comes out though. Uh, but the Pantograph, come, super cool device. I didn't do it justice though. I didn't print it with meticulous precision like Christian designed it to be printed. Um, he did a fantastic job putting this kit together. I'll put a link, if he gives me a link in time for this video, I'll put it in the description below if you wanna do it because he's selling this as a all the plans and the guide. You just have to buy the screws and the bearings and some other trimmings and things like that. But you know, I went through and was able to engrave poorly on the stock that I chose, but super cool device. You know, uh, it, it proves the concept for me that it's able to be done. And last up, our Dummy 13 dog. So I did some armor pieces for it. I don't know if I'm ever gonna print in silk again. Silk's not something that you, silk's for printing things that you never touch and put on a shelf and leave alone because a slight breeze seems to just break silk into a million pieces. Now again, I printed it with low wall loops, low infill uh, to get an idea for the Dummy 13 dog. Um, you know, and the skeleton too is low infill. Again, it was kind of a concept to kind of prove the point. Uh, but this blue, I love this giant arm blue silk. It's such a, a, a pretty color to me. So fragile. Silk is just such a, a weird thing to print with. Um, but I got this in place and I was like trying to size it up to think, okay, how big of a thing can I print? So I took the largest piece of the armor. This is overall the largest piece of the entire model. And this is at 300%, okay? So how big of a of one can I print on a Cobra? Because that's probably gonna be the printer that does the most amount of work on this print. And I did this one, this is 1,000%. I think, is this 1,000%? Seems big, this is 300. It might be bigger, it's been a few days. This is how big the dog's gonna be. So relatively speaking, I'm trying to visualize how big this dog's gonna be. So if this is his ass section or his back abdomen, and then this, you know, kind of extrapolate. The dog should be probably the size, probably the size of my 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 biggest dog, my Whippet. And, you know, he's going to be probably a you know good size, 40, 50 pound ish dog equivalent to real life dogs. So I think I'm going to continue with that. This this print came out looking like shit though, I, you know, because again, you know, it's just you know with these proof of concept prints, I'm not trying to burn a lot of film, and this didn't take a lot. It was like 200 grams, so you know that's what, $2, so that's fine with me, again, to prove the concept, because I know a lot of people put meticulous time, you know, a lot of time into before they print, to, you know, and they don't burn filament like I do. Uh, but with these big prints, man, it's just like, it's almost worth it, you'll almost save filament, at least that's the rationale that I'm using. It's probably dumb, but you know, if I print with low amount of filament, burn the 200 grams, and I can kind of see about, you know, what to do and what not to do, maybe that makes the next print more successful versus me screwing up on the one and then I lose all that filament. Again, that might just be me coping, I'm not sure, but very excited about that. Let me know in the comments what color you think I should do for the dog because my big dummy 13 up there, it's the blue and white because that's kind of like on the side, my, my channel um, color palette. And so the dog, I don't think the dog should be blue and white because kind of, you'll kind of lose it. So I'm thinking something, maybe it's a girl dog and it's black and pink black pink, black pink in your area, uh, something like that. So let me know in the comments what color scheme you would go with. So those are wild and wonderful things that I'm working on today. I'd love to know what you're working on in the comments below and what you think about all these things, what you think has the most potential and just, just say something, just comment. Be sure to like the video because it's a nice thing to do and subscribe for more content like this. I'm the Tacticals. see you next time.